so if we can, uh, we can make a start, please. Can I welcome everybody to this uh, cabinet meeting? Um, the first item is the, uh, the usual item, Members Code of Conduct, Declarations of Interest. Can I, um, can I just move a block declaration of interest for all cabinet members on items 12 and 13 uh, around um, admission arrangements for schools and school meals because uh, all of us are school governors so I can just move up uh, a block declaration there and I, can I personally move a personal interest on item 5 the, um, uh, the local welfare assistance scheme there's a reference, there's a couple of references to there's a food bank, and I'm a trustee of all the food banks, so that's a personal interest. I know there are a number of the cabinet members who want to go to George, but can I um, go to just under uh, item 14, the child poverty group is up in and the member group. The foundation years are made, but Chris, Chris, next, and then Chris.
depend on the register. However, once the new register is focused on the census of December 2015, they will be removed. And at that point, it's most likely that those registration will be registered, presenting further challenges for the council. As such, where to increase registration should be ongoing. In conclusion, this is a new old platform and it's a really useful piece of work and as a self archive it's actually made easier by all the years of work done by council office in the past in distribution of the register. So really the report speaks for itself and I would recommend you to accept the recommendation. Okay, thanks Jude. Um, I mean I think it's an excellent piece of work. I think you, you've highlighted I think the key key issue really in, in the report, which is around <coughs> Um, those areas of the borough um, where there's, there's a need to do some targeted um, work to increase the number of registration. Um, do, just, could you just sort of explain a little bit about what form that targeted work might take, just for our interest? Well, I think there's opportunities to target uh, particular areas, uh, even down to drill down into the coastal districts within uh, the desired board. And I just think that this is a fantastic opportunity to work as an old council to go around and you know, build up and we you know we've had swathes of laws that you know um, people are, are registered and this is an opportunity to put them out to very short term people. Um, and I'm actually delighted with this opportunity because the real worry for the system is the 2016 election uh, when the new register, we only have the new register. We need all councils to start to sort of make decisions, raise the profile of where we are as far as possible, uh, as well as every single council has to start to make
just very practical um, point uh, I'll just make. Regulation 3 is chairs of constituency committees are requested to include IER as a topic of discussion as part of their for planning for the new year. So I'm assuming um, sort of searching that we can have that request on because not all constituency chairs are counselors. Also, the emphasis on um, strategic commissioning. We had a member 
developments in fact a few weeks ago before really when we went to most of members um, but a lot of it, um, uh, about how we do the strategic commission work going forward. Um, and I think that's going to be a, a key um, a key element of, of the work. Um, I just wanted to say also, uh, because again we had some debate about this on, on Monday. Um, clearly we've we've had to make a petition around the shared services work of Cheshire West and Chester. Um, we've, we've put that on hold because we, um, I think we said from very early on that we need a compelling business case. I don't believe that compelling business case is there yet um, in terms of the return that we're looking at on those corporate services around HR, payroll, legal IT, procurement and finance. However, um, I want to emphasize that I don't believe that the work that's been done today will be wasted. Um, we need to, I think, come back to this in the, um, in the autumn and October when we'll be clear about how the, the wider remodeling work or uh, what of the proposals and recommendations from, from that will be. So the work won't be wasted, and I'm still personally convinced that shared services will be, will be a key element of our Wasted. I, I know because Graham, and I know you've spoken to the chief exec of Cheshire West, that they're very comfortable with, with this proposal. They, they understand our, our, our reasoning, so, so uh, I think that's absolutely fine. Um, but I think I, I, I just like to say I think this is this is without doubt the most important project that is on our agenda over the next year. You know, it's so crucial to the, the future of this council that we get this right. That I think it is important to. Um, you know, to take it that seriously. And what the rest of the, the rest of this report does is to set out um, in some detail the process that we'll be going through uh, over the next um, five or six months to, um, to come to um, a conclusion about the, um, the proposals that we'll be coming up with. And I think we, again, I think we said from, from very early, um, an early stage of this process that we, we've got an open mind in terms of new ways of delivering services, in terms of you know, whether that might be uh, national shared services, but partnering with um, other organisations, um, looking at social enterprises, and <coughs> we've certainly been doing that. I know we had a social services in the report later on um, a, a, a around one uh, element there of uh, the department that we're looking at that model. But basically, I think we, we need to leave ourselves open to a whole range of new ways of delivering services. Um, but, uh, you know, again, um, we need to have the forefront of our mind our kind of um, overarching kind of priorities around protecting, as far as we can, frontline services, vulnerable people, communities, and, um, you know, attracting kind of uh, new jobs and investment into the area, which are our kind of overarching priorities. So, um, <coughs> this report is, is basically asking Cabinet to authorise the Chief Executive to proceed with this future council project um, and also to agree the engagement plan set out in, in, in section four uh, in terms of involving members, uh, partners, external stakeholders, stakeholders and our, our residents. Uh, so I think it is important that we, um, we consult widely and that we have further reports on progress at regular stages back to cabinet and that we also uh, note the, um, uh, the work around the development of the shared services business case and the decision we've made to pause this um, project at this moment um, and to make sure it's kind of fully integrated into the future council work um, uh, generally. So uh, I think those, those are the key points from this report, but I think, you know, um, at future council uh, cabinet meetings, I think this will, this will be a major element of our agenda going forward. Ah. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. I think, as, as we said, this is obviously the most important piece of work that we're going to do in the going forward. What I don't think this council has ever undertaken an exercise like this. I mean, what's going on at the moment with our strategy? I can't get over the authority of being Deputy Secretary of Service to review a route and branch review at every level of the organisation to see whether those services can be delivered in a different way, in an effective way. Also, uh, one of the elements that they've 
uh, are we content with lots of recommendations? Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Right, so that then takes us on to item five, which is the local welfare assistance scheme. Um, I, I just want to say a few words about this. I mean, clearly, this is a um, a scheme that we inherited from um, the government who transferred uh, responsibility for providing help for people literally in kind of dire need um, of help through um, you know redundancy and benefit cuts and etc. Um, and they transferred that responsibility from the old, uh, I think it was called the, uh, the, it was the social fund when it was administered by the um, Department of Work and Pensions and also the crisis loans element um, of the work that the um, BWP uh, job centres did. So they transferred that to us in, in 2013 and we had a scheme um, in place um, which, which is, I think, quite rightly focused Rather unlike unlike the um, the scheme that was under the BWP, which is sort of um, cash loan, we give out vouchers for, for what actually people needed help on, whether that be food, fuel, etc. Et um, and um, I mean, I think the, uh, the, the what we've we've seen is that the although after a kind of slow start, the number of applications now is is really um, kind of uh, increasing, so I think they've gone up, um, if, uh, if the report mentions they've gone up in America 233 from 5,500 to 7,300, and the weekly payments have increased from 4,500 in April last year to 24,000 in February. So um, clearly we've not <coughs> yet spent up to the full limit, but I'm, I'm confident we will get very close to that. Um, I think the disappointing thing for me is that next year will be the last year that we will get this money and after that the government are cutting off completely, which I think is um, I think it's outrageous really. You know, one, on one level they're cutting the kind of benefits um, of, of lots of people and then they're cutting the, the help that people literally in dying need uh, uh, you know, to help cope with those, those kind of um, changes. And I just worry that, um, that um, unless we put something in place, um, it's going to increase the number of people who have to use loan sharks and those kind of uh, organisations which uh, we all know the reputation they've got. So I think it's, it's, it's a shame that next year will be the final year. What um, this report is doing is it's, it's striking up um, some changes to the criteria and the policy, which is set out in paragraph 2.37. 40. So the actual policy is included in the appendix. So I think we should agree those changes. But the, uh, the other main recommendation, which I'm keen to agree, ask Cabot to agree, is that we, we ask for further reform where we review what measures we might put in place when this funding runs out. And, and I'm certainly um, very supportive of, of us as a council continuing to provide some help for those people in the direst of need if you like. Um, now, you know, that could be a whole range of, of things from um, supporting um, credit union to um, supporting the food bank, etc. I've got an open mind on, uh, on what we might do, but I think to not have any help on those vulnerable people, I think is, is just a derelict of our duty as a, 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 a council. And, and I think um, I would ask the, the officers to come back uh, with, with a further report uh, on, on what options we might look at when the, the funding finishes after next year. So I suppose, um, just to, 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 to sum up, so in terms of recommendations, I'd be asking um, Cabinet to agree the policy with those very minor changes that set out in appendix one, and then to come back with this further report on, on how we might deal with this, um, you know, this huge kind of issue in, in, in the year after next. So can we agree those? Okay, um, so item six is the National Non-Domestic Rates Discretionary Relief Retail Policy. Um, and I'm simply going to ask you to agree the recommendation um, in this report, um, uh, which is set out in paragraph 12.1. Uh, so this is for retail, um, this is the retail uh, relief policy for, for businesses. 
the residual value um, of 50,000 or less. So can we agree that recommendation you can? Thank you very much. Okay, that takes us then to item seven, which is the sundry debtor write-offs. Um, okay, so this is the, I think this is the uh, continuation of the work that we've been doing around bad debts, uh, picking up on the report from, that we had from the independent person, um, Eugene Sullivan. Um, and I think um, the, the, uh, the reasons why we're having to do the, 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 the write-offs are included in, in paragraph 8.3, um, which, which I, again, I don't think we've got much, much choice about. But I think the, the, the thing we wanted to emphasize is that if we don't do that bit, and remember these debts, some of these debts go back a number of years, um, actually across several administrations of this council. Um, but I think if we don't write these, agree to write these debts off, the danger is we fall into the trap that we fell into previous year, where they're actually included as part of our assets. And, and I think that would be a major, major mistake to continue um, to, to, sh to show that. Uh, I think it would be very misleading. So I think um, whilst this is obviously a considerable amount of money, I think it's, um, it's a tribute actually to the work of the team that have been um, uh, trying to uh, chase down these bad debts, that we're, we're at least now identifying which ones we can collect and which ones we can't collect. So I think that's, that's a positive development, and I would like to Canada to agree um, to these recommendations uh, as contained in paragraph 13.1. Can you agree that? Thank you very much. Okay, that takes us to item eight, which is the core book risk management policy. Um, I think I'd just like to say I think this is an excellent document. It is really crucial that we have a, uh, a risk management policy that um, I think one of the, the, the strong points from this report is we, we need to be able to, um, you know, not, this is not about being risk averse, it's about being risk aware. And I think, um, as it says in the, the, the forward to the policy statement on page 129, <coughs> risk, management, right, risk management shouldn't stifle innovation, but we need to, to as a cabinet for the council, be, be aware, <coughs> be fully aware of um, uh, uh, of what the risks are, understand them, make sure they're actively managed and justified. So I think this is a really good policy. I think it's um, uh, 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 something that uh, we, we, we have needed to put in place. It's already been through all this risk management committee on the 28th of January. They've endorsed it. Um, I think we should support it as well. The other thing that we're being asked to do <coughs> in 12.2 is that two cabinet members mm -hmm. participate in um, the risk appetite exercise, which is set out in paragraph 2.14, and I would propose that both myself and Anne, the Batman Deputy Leader, um, kind of volunteer for that, um, that exercise for the cabinet. So it's agree the policy and agree those two cabinet members. Agree? Somehow agree that's <laughs> Okay. Okay, so that then takes us on to item nine, nomination of civic mayor and deputy civic mayor 2014-15. So I will make the following nominations. For mayor, I would nominate Councillor Steve Fax, and for deputy mayor, I nominate Councillor Les Rowlands. And uh, those nominations will be submitted to the annual meeting of the council. Are they agreed? Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> okay, uh, no, I'm just joking. Um, right, so that's agreed. Item 10 um, is uh, New Hall Farm Hoy Lake. Adrian, I'm just going to yes, talk yes. to you. Yes, this is um, very straightforward. As you know, we're developing a uh, resort. And uh, Mr. Hume, I produce it, I assume it's pronounced Hume, um, has been the tenant of the farm since 1962. Um, he